that's more along our speed so let's uh, select that so uh, we have the audio feature pulled up in machine if you just wanted to mess with the sample itself you can just click on this audio drop down menu here right this little down arrow click on native instruments or I'm sorry sampler and then you can have the sample itself you can kind of chop it up if you wanted to that way uh, so there's a couple different options uh, the way I like to nudge stuff is I turn on turn off the grid so with the grid on it snaps to the grid like any any pattern that you move uh, it snaps to you know however how you have your grid placed right now I have the grid in 16th sixteenths um, and if I turn the grid off which is this little guy right here I can kind of move him freely and I can get more in depth or um, more control the closer I zoom in so let's move it to about right there grid back on <laughs> So I cleaned it up just a little bit. Uh, also, the, you know, it's just loud overall in general, probably because the samples are louder. So I just have to adjust the volumes and the frequencies in some of these areas that I know always have problems. And that's the 300 hertz range. And that's typical. That's pretty typical with um, across the board, like that 300 hertz range uh, really causes some, some issues. So, um, on the master, for instance, I could use something like um, Isotope. What's that? Yeah. It has a visual equalizer, and this has been super useful for me over the past uh, month or so as I'm, you know, trying to EQ. Um, you know, a lot of my sounds uh, using a visual equalizer is kind of clutch, so. As you see, like, there's a lot of, a lot of sub bass uh, that may be peaking, so kind of want to turn that down a little bit. And this is that 300 hertz range I was telling you about. So I'm just going to tighten this up and find that frequency range which around here. So I'm going a little bit further along in the process, but a lot of times I tend to do this as I go, uh, simply because like I want to try to achieve a clean sound as I move through the creation of the track. It's probably counterproductive to the creative process, but I think it's just part of me. It's kind of like cooking and cleaning as you go, you know, type thing. Like I could clean the whole kitchen when I'm finished, uh, but you want less mess to do when you're done. So. That's kind of the philosophy that I, that I take uh, whenever I'm creating.
when you download instruments that aren't you know from native instruments but that that are compatible in contact i always put them in the same folder as the rest of my um my native instruments libraries so for instance i'll pull it up here i have a separate hard drive that has all of my native instruments libraries so everything pulls from this separate hard drive so i save my uh some space on uh, my computer itself so i have all of my my libraries here and any type of uh, for instance uh urban keys um that's something that is not from native instruments but that's compatible um what else is there i know there's mike colombo i have my my colombo keys that are in here somewhere Mike Colombo's Golden Keys, and for instance, Sanjay's. Let's see, let's find his. Sanjay's Rhodes. So, downloaded it, I threw it in the same folder so that whenever I go to search for an instrument in contact, I, ha I have no problems trying to find it because I know it's in here. So, in order to add it, you'd basically put it in that folder, come here, and it's just, it automatically will pull up if it's a NKI compatible uh, instrument or a instrument that works inside of contact. And um, so there's a folder with all the different presets, but what you can do is you just load up one. Whoops. Let's not do that. And then inside here, you can actually make changes or change the uh, the different presets. So yeah, that's how these things work.